The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Day two of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Paul Gillen of SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Stephanie Trunzo, Chief Creative Officer at Point Source. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, great to have you guys apparently in the finalists for this app throwdown. So Absolutely. explain what, what you guys do and what's, the, what's this throwdown? Sure. Well, the app throwdown, you develop an app and then you throw it down. <laughs> <laughs> as hard as you can, break the app Exactly, bomb. that's right. <laughs> it's a mobile, is it a mobile app? Okay. Yes, uh, yes, it works it's on a Android. mobile app. It's, it does work on Android. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do break really easily. So you know you have to really throw it with force and you know make it shatter. No, honestly, what we've done is um, we have developed an app for HH Greg, um, and they are a big electronics retailer. Um, we actually heard uh, Kevin Lyons at the keynote this morning talking about the solution that we developed for him. Uh, some really cute commercials. He had the whole audience laughing. He got up on stage and took a selfie as the first thing he did. So yeah, we developed that app for them um, and that's what is in our app throwdown. So we uh, used Worklight and IBM Commerce and built an adapter and extremely high performing app really fast. Awesome and amazing. Well, now for yeah. those people who haven't who haven't used the app, what is what is different about it? We've all used lots of retail sure. apps. What's different about this one? What's different about this one is it is blazing fast. So, as we know, the user is extremely discerning, and I'm sure you guys can attest. You know, you play around with an app on your phone. If it's too slow to load, if it takes too long to add something to your shopping cart, if it's processing for too long, people get frustrated and give up. Um, abandoned shopping cart rates are really high because of that reason. This app is blazing fast. We actually improve performance on the mobile over the desktop by 1,400%. So it's actually 1400. faster on the mobile device. Absolutely. The now this yeah. is a, relates to an issue we were talking about, uh, we've been talking about earlier on theCUBE, is, is the, uh, the decision that you make about where logic goes on the device or sure. in the cloud and the latency issues that introduces. What, what decisions did you make there? So, at Point Source, one of the things that we do is we spend a lot of time in upfront investigation. So we do a lot of um, business requirements analysis, and one of the things our business analysts do is spend time talking to the stakeholders about how the information is going to be accessed, where the users are commonly going to be when they're accessing it, and then you use all of those use cases to help you decide, are there offline use cases, cases where they're not going to have access to the internet, but they still want to be able to browse, say, their wish list, for example, or they have a cache of products product information from something they've looked at previously. So we use use cases to drive the architectural decisions about how we actually build the application. This creates some interesting uh, design issues though as well because you may be able to actually predict based upon a user's, user's behavior what information they will want. You can download right. that and cache it Correct. for rapid access at a separate time. What, did, did that kind of, are, are you building apps with that kind of, of thinking in mind right absolutely. now? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We um, use REST APIs, so we try to keep everything as much as possible easily accessed. Um, you know, it's fast, it's quicker that way instead of continuously making calls to the server for information. So um, we are very thoughtful about that process for sure. I think most of us would agree that most apps are too slow. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you, do you believe, uh, uh, why is that? Why aren't more apps more responsive? I honestly think that it's kind of a, a two-fold problem. One is that they, the, the people working on the applications are not thinking enough about the user and what that experience is actually going to be, and that a matter of a second load time is actually make or break to whether it succeeds or fails. And the second thing is that I think people are not recognizing or they're working with agencies that don't have enough architectural foundation and understanding that design isn't just on the front end and on the glass, it's about how you build the services and the architecture underneath as well. So I think that a lot of enterprises are working with agencies of record or marketing firms that maybe can make something beautiful, but they don't really know how to make it perform. Or they're working with outdated architecture, perhaps. 
Stephanie, a lot of things um, going on, certainly in the San Francisco area where I live, is uh, design, design interaction design is huge, right? Yes, so I was you know, talking to folks who, who are dealing with big data and software, but they're dealing with on a physical plant perspective. But now with the Nest and the Internet of Things, the human interaction piece is a huge deal. Now on the computer side, we've been dealing with this stuff, going about the right, graphical sure. user interfaces. But sure. now you have a whole new era of interaction, yeah. that's just different. Certainly the phone's different than a desktop. So, so how do you talk to customers who say, give me a mobile app? It's not that easy. So what's the process and what are the things have you learned in going through those? Uh, what are the best practices for really nailing uh, a roadmap for user interaction? Is it a pure mobile app? Is it web response, native HTML5, mm -hmm. all right. of the above. I mean, how do you sort through that? Share your experience. Yeah, sure. Well, there are, you actually raise a lot of different topics there. There are a ton of issues. And, you know, actually the, what you just said highlights how complicated these decisions are. And that's why you need to partner with someone who is extremely expert in the mobile field. It's not the kind of thing that you should necessarily take your in-house web design firm and ask them to de develop your mobile strategy for you. You really need to make sure that you understand all of the facets of the full life cycle, the full solution, to ensure you know what you're doing. Give so, an example of, of, of what might happen if someone does that, for instance. If they go to their web, oh, just build me the mobile app. What would well, be a consequence? Sure, sure. So I think one consequence would be that you have really slow apps. <laughs> <laughs> the, another consequence would be that you have non-intuitive interactions. So take for example, if you are um, typically familiar with designing for the web, for a browser. Mm -hmm. If something is off by a pixel or two, you know, maybe it's going to catch the designer's eye, but it's not going to make or break the experience. If something is off by a pixel or two on a device, you may have just changed the touch size or the touch space to the point that it is no longer responsive. So it is absolutely critical that you understand those interaction patterns and you understand the metrics and parameters that you need to work within. Stephanie, looking longer term, uh, from the front door of this hotel to here, I passed, I think, four different signs encouraging me to download an app. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we know there's how many hundreds of thousands of apps out there. Is the app really sustainable in the long, long term, the metaphor of the app, or will be, will be migrating to, as John Warnock has suggested, the app, the app is just a, a stage, uh, a stopping point on the way to a more universal access uh, method that yeah. is not dependent on downloading. Something. Right, that's a great question. You know, I just recently read um, a study that said something about how, I think it was, you know, 60%, some majority of users that still prefer in the retail space to go to a browser um, rather than install an app. And you know, the context in which I read that was saying that uh, mobile developers should be worried because that was still the user's preference. But what was interesting to me about that was actually that is opportunity, the way I read it. So there's an opportunity because the reason that the users are preferring to go to the browser is because they're so much better well-designed than the apps. So I think that there's a huge opportunity still for apps. Um, they're context-rich and I think it's it's, it's going to be very difficult to, to get that amount of context. So I know where you're at, I know what you're doing. It can collect information by using the operating system of the device. Um, and you're not able to get that kind of rich experience in a web browser or a mobile web, so. so talk about the, um, the, uh, the, your company. What do you guys do? You guys provide that mobile services? So you made an app so you're on the throwdown competition. Yep. What, is the, what does your company do? So we do, everything end-to-end -end for mobile strategy. And what that means is, you could say, um, as an enterprise, we know we need to get started, and we sit down and build a strategy. Um, you could say we already have a start at something, and we don't feel comfortable with where it's at yet, and we need you to progress it. Um, we go through the investigation process to understand the business goals, and we have a design team, a digital experience organization that takes that to wireframe concept, uh, high fidelity mockups, and then the development organization that actually executes and delivers. And then we'll also support mobile launch. So one of the things that we learned uh, early on was that our, we worked really hard collaborating with our clients to come up with an amazing and beautiful app, get it into the app store, and nothing happens. And what we realized was that we need to also help our clients figure out how to launch the app. How are they going to enable their users? So for example, if you're in retail and you develop an app 
and your customers download it, but you have never enabled your, your store associates to know how to use the app, how are you going to succeed? Now your customers know more about the app than, the, than your employees in the store. So we also work on doing training. Allstate is one of our big clients. And uh, we released an app for Allstate Dealer Services. We actually went to their agent conference and trained their agents on how to use the app. Now you're setting them up to succeed. You are actually going to get the value you hope for out of that mobile strategy you built. So I did some researching around and noticed you guys are tied into um, the uh, Jazz Hub. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess you worked in that group at IBM. Yeah. So you have an IBM background, you're I in do. a business partner. So yep. how does that all tie together? That's DevOps. So essentially, yeah. are you the front end to the, the, uh, the outcome oriented of the, of the DevOps piece? Yeah, or? so uh, Jazz Hub um, is amazing because what it allows us to do is provide complete transparency to our clients. So often when you're working, our, our clients, when they're working with vendors, there's a lot of times where you know, they maybe had a bad experience in the past where they worked with a vendor, gave them requirements, but they were sort of in a black box. They went off and developed, came back with whatever they produced, and it wasn't what they had asked for. So with Jazz Hub, we're able to say, we're going to work collaboratively together. You mean together. in terms of the solution, where it's yeah. hosted, compliance stuff, or is it other stuff? The actual development. Oh, so okay. to say, okay, all of our use cases are written out there. They can see the work items on the development as we're progressing. And often our clients are actually collaborating with us in that project area. So um, we use it to, to facilitate all of the collaboration around the actual development process. Uh, presumably, you you have experience with Worklight already. You've been using Worklight. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, what are your what are your early reviews? How good is it? It is fantastic. So, you know, I um I am a, a former IBMer, but I'm a business partner now. Of course, I support IBM, but um, we don't have to use tools to use that right. we don't so want to if use. If you had and no, I mean, you you're, you're not. You're not being paid to say this. That's right, right so, exactly. All right, that's a good so, question, yeah, exactly. That, that's Evaluating exactly against right. the alternative, you think it's the best? Absolutely. So anyone who's worked with developers knows that they can be very finicky about the tools that they have to use. And if they don't like the tools that they're being asked to use, they will find ways around it <laughs> to not use them. The developers at Point Source choose to use Worklight even on the projects that we develop in-house for ourselves. And I think that's as strong a testament as anything, that the developers are choosing to use it for their development. And uh, in terms of the, of the back end, I mean, are you, are you moving toward a soft layer environment? Are you using soft layer right now? Uh, what's your experience? Yeah. So you are, so what, Actually, what has your experience been as soft layer, uh, whether it's for um, cloud bursting or, or just or, or as your primary platform? in terms of the, the performance that, that you're getting? Sure, so we just started investigating SoftLayer. We actually are looking at um, doing the first Worklight implementation on SoftLayer. So we're not very far into it yet, so I can't really give you a ton of feedback, but it is something that so far, it's looking like it's going to be fantastic for us. Uh, so on the, um, back to the mobile again, I want to ask the, sure. uh, re -ask the question about mobile response, web response versus mobile app pure. A lot of people think, I'm just going to build a mobile app, yeah. total, self-contained mobile app. When does someone decide when not to do that? Yeah, so um, I know I keep mentioning retail, but they just seem to be the best examples in, to the question. So there are a lot of um, retailers that are in a position where they've spent a lot of time and money in building their e-commerce solutions. And they know that they need to evolve and they need to get to an m-commerce model as well, or an omni-channel model really. And they, but however, they can't afford to sort of just shut down business for three months while they rebuild a new strategy. So what we do is help them by beginning with a responsive web-based mobile web um, with phone form factor, then we'll expand it to tablet size, and then slowly you're able to replace your desktop site with a single site, single code base. That same code base can be used for installable apps as well. So now you have a single code base serving all of those needs, and you know, really it's sort of an iterative model that gets you to that sweet spot at the end. So, I got to ask you a question about the, your, your, your solutions, because a lot of companies that I talk to are like, no, 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 I need to bring that mobile in-house. I'm not going to deal with an agency. Right. I mean, agencies, a lot of these firms, uh, like yours, would be pigeonholed as, oh, they're just like, you throw money at it and they do a promotional website, yeah. um, and it's not core to my business. Where core competency mobile is. Right. Um, whether, so the app development process comes into question. So, how do you guys answer that? Because more people have to outsource to de designers. They don't have the expertise in-house. They can't hire fast enough. Yep. So, how do they 
they determine an agency versus a real development shop? What's the, how would you, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's a, t it's a controversial question, but some agencies just aren't that good. Yeah, I mean we are, um, we are positioning ourselves in a place that's sort of in between because we can do the design work like an agency can, um, but we also have all of the experience and expertise to understand how to do the architectural underpinnings as well. And so, you know, the interesting part is that it depends what organization you're talking to. If you're talking to a CIO office, then they're interested in how do they complement their existing in-house skill set. Um, and if you're talking to a CMO office, they want to work with an agency because they want it to be beautiful and you know it's important that they're bringing the brand through. Yeah. Um, and so we are on it, kind of in a, a nice place where we can bridge the gap in those discussions. Um, and so for us, we haven't really had any difficulties because yeah. we kind of get to a place where we're looking to make sure that our clients are see us as a trusted advisor and we're bringing enough value to them quickly that we can prove ourselves and, and you know, they're happy to continue working with us then. Is feature creep a problem, a growing problem with apps now? It seems to me that apps more and more have lots of stuff that I never use. Yeah. Uh, I, do we have the same problem that we had on the desktop, uh, where, yes. where there's yeah. more bells and whistles? I think other? that is that is a place where you really do need to be extremely rigorous about your decision making, and I don't think that we would condone <laughs> putting out an app with features that we haven't proven have some value. So we do a lot of validation along the well, way. Have some value versus are used. Yes. I mean, presumably these features actually have use to the 5% of people who want them. But yes. We do friendly user testing. So we always ask our clients to help identify some opportunities where we can get early feedback. Um, and so, yes, to your point, not just valuable, but making sure that they actually get used. So when we do friendly testing, I mean, um, you know, it might be that just to take the retail example, if it's um, if it's a retail app, then we would find out when are they going to have an opportunity to talk to the store associates, let them try it out, see if they're going to use the features, and we can pay attention to that and adjust based on it. Speaking, it's sort of a related question, but speaking to retail apps in particular, what are the most common mistakes that you see companies making when they when they develop their retail apps? Um, going too fast, definitely going too fast not thinking about, you can go quickly, you can move quickly, but if you develop before you think, then you're going to end up with something that isn't performant. It probably has a, a cluster of different features that might not be functional or useful. Um, I think the other thing that I see a, a big mistake is um, content that's hidden. So you have to navigate through multiple different menus to get to the content that right. you want. Um, and not really thinking through the user interaction flows well enough. So the user gets frustrated so quickly, uh, you really can't afford to you know, neglect going through that due diligence at the beginning to make sure you've got the flows down pat. Stephanie, thanks so much for coming inside. We really appreciate it. It's great Absolutely. to get the fresh Thank insight from the outside the IBM uh, family. Now, but apparently, you guys are all IBMers, uh, founders. Is it mostly IBM, ex IBMers? No, no. Actually, um, we have I don't know maybe 16 percent of the company IBMers. So how big it's is not the really company? That much. We have around 100 people worldwide. And where's your guys' main office? Raleigh. Raleigh. Okay, yeah, so in, Raleigh is our coast. headquarters. Yeah. Anything on the West Coast at all? California? No, nope, not yet. We're not up yet. in Durham. Mm -hmm. Got to come to California. A lot of a lot of business out there. Yeah. You guys work with any startups at all? Do you do any work with start like young companies or mostly? We big do. Companies? We have some partnerships um, that we're exploring. So uh, we love working with other local businesses, especially. So we support local businesses in Raleigh. Um, you know, we've been around for ten years, but we feel like a startup because we pivoted to mobile mm -hmm. only two years ago. So, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for uh, coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it, and congratulations on the throwdown. I love throw that phone down. I hope yeah, you, win you that guys one. have to vote. Everybody has to vote for us for the uh, throwdown. How do, how do app throwdown. That? You just tweet hashtag IBM Impact App at Point Source. Hashtag IBM Impact App. That's a big hashtag. It is at, at Point Source. At Point Source. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, we're here inside the Cube talking mobile with Stephanie. We'll be right back after the short break. This is the Cube.